Ida Tarball was born on November 5, 1857 in Erie County, Pennsylvania. She was born to Esther Ann, her mother, and her father, Franklin Summer Tarball, a teacher and a joiner by trade. In 1860, Ida and her family moved to Titusville, Pennsylvania, which at the time was the center of oil production. Her father later became an oil producer and refiner. Things were going really well in her father's business. Ida said they had luxuries she never even heard of. Then in 1872, the town received the Sap Improvement Scheme. This was totally unexpected. This was a hidden agreement between the railroads and refiners led by J.D. Rockefeller, which led to her father's business and many small oil companies also going out of business. The Tarbells were socially active, entertaining, prohibitionist, and women suffragists. She was the head of her class in high school. She went on to study biology at Allegheny College in 1876, and out of 41 people, she was the only female. She graduated in 1880. Ida's first job after graduating college was teaching at Poland Union Seminary in Poland, Ohio. She taught many classes, including academic and language, but only after two years realized teaching was not what she dreamed of doing and that her true passion was writing. In 1894, she soon became McLure's Magazine's most successful writer in her series about Abraham Lincoln. People had set out to wage a campaign to expose corruption in business and political lawlessness. She used the story of Standard Oil to show the bothersome issues. Her antagonist was J.D. Rockefeller and she researched him for two years to try and take him down. Ida was a progressive who hoped to change many things. There is no man more dangerous in a position of power than he who refuses to accept as a working truth that all a man does should make for rightness and soundness, that even the fixing of the tariff rate must be moral. Ida Tarbell on J.D. Rockefeller. I became as what people of your time call a muckraker. I enlightened the public about the details of the underside of American life. My main target was John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil Company. I wrote about the oil companies in newspapers and magazines, which eventually turned into a book, The History of the Standard Oil Company. I believe that children are not meant for work, but to play and not worry about adult things. I believe that working conditions should be as clean and healthy as being at home would be, and I also believe that women should have the same rights as any man. The right to vote, the right to choose the profession we want, and not have someone choose for us. Now back. Ida Tarbell uh, wrote for McClure's magazine and wrote a series of articles concentrating on John D. Rockefeller, the oil titan. We talked about the Standard Oil Company, you know, and create a monopoly or trust using horizontal uh, consolidation or integration. From 1902 to 1904, she wrote the series of articles. And in 1904, they were published into a book called The History of Standard Oil Company. And she was the author, Ida M. Tarbell. She wrote about the unfair business practices used by John D. Rockefeller. And she called the government to change its policies away from laissez-faire and toward active government and asked them to to make antitrust legislation to make the formation of trust and monopolies illegal and called on the government to uh, regulate that activity and make sure it never happened again. Ida Tarbell is going to portray John D. Rockefeller, the owner of Standard Oil Company, as a bad-tempered, stingy, money-grabbing, and viciously effective, he was viciously effective at monopolizing the oil trade creating the trust that destroyed small business. And she does that effectively in her writing. And that was the, her book, This History of Standard Oil Company. And when she, after it is read by Congress and other politicians, uh, by 1914, it took a good decade, but the Clayton Antitrust Act and the Federal Trade Commission Act were passed in 1914. The Clayton Tarbell's exposed to Standard Oil was the first coverage of its kind in which it attacked Rockefeller, perhaps the best-known businessman at the time. She even wrote the first CEO profile ever, though she never met or talked to Rockefeller. Sadly, Ida died of pneumonia on January 6, 1944. She will forever remain a woman to look up to. Her house was declared a National Historic Landmark, and in 2000 she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca, New York.